Jeez, Indiana Jones meets Han Solo, Star Wars style. With the Solo a Star Wars story film coming out, I wanted to put something out in conjunction for it. Here's the thing though. When this film was first announced, I wasn't that excited. Part of the reason is because I feel I don't need to know anything about young Han Solo. Another part is, at the same time that this film was announced, there was talk about Lucasfilm also making a Yoda film, a Obi-Wan or Boba Fett film as well. It just seemed that Lucasfilm was just being lazy by retreading on the past established characters instead of creating new ones and expanding the Star Wars universe. By only focusing on these old well-known characters of your past, you're actually making your universe smaller. Now, if you're going to make a movie based on a new character, then the best one to use would be Dr. Aphra. Currently appearing in her own series put out by Marvel Comics, Shelly Lona Afra, skilled in galactic history and ancient civilizations since she was a child. After the rise of the Galactic Empire and the death of her mother, she joined the Empire, but, but after falling out of favor with them, she struck out on her own, searching for lost relics and profiting off of them and scamming people along the way. Her incredible intelligence, skill, and ambition are her greatest strengths and weaknesses. They both get her into trouble, but they also save her at the same time. A great moment that shows this is in issue 25 of Dark Vader. She had to be crazy to take this risk, and there wasn't any way that she could have known that would work out 100%, but then again, maybe she did. After all, in her adventures, she seems to have a fundamental understanding of everyone that she runs into. But even then, it doesn't always work out for her. Like right now, currently in her series, she formed an alliance with possibly the best characters in the series, the murders, and possibly insane droids, Triple Zero and BT-1. So let's talk about them. I knew I was going to like them when Triple Zero introduced himself like this. I'm 000 or Triple Zero if you prefer. I'm a pro call droid specialized in etiquette, customs, translation, and torture, ma'am. Okay, <laughs> BT-1 is an assassin droid. Two great tastes that taste great together. I find it interesting and a bit disturbing that when Dr. Aphra and Darth Vader became their new masters, that Triple Zero didn't shake their hands because he thought he might accidentally electrocute and kill them. These droids are untrustworthy unless there's something in it for them, which is usually extreme torture, and will try to find a loophole of all whatever situation they're currently in. Hmm, just like Dr. Aphra. Another good standout character would be the resident Wookiee, Black Crescentan, aka Santi, who is basically a one-eyed, likes to fight guy. But when you learn about his background, you realize he has a very valid reason to be as angry as he is. Now, since she's an archaeologist, the type of locations she visits and can visit in the future are almost limitless. The series takes place during the original trilogy timeline, so we get to see her interact with the OG Star Wars heroes. It's really fun to see, actually. During this, everyone has their own moments, so while Aphra is the main character, she doesn't dominate them. She's not overpowered. She's not a Mary Sue. Her only special ability is reading the situation and people and being greedy. So when she's facing off against a more skilled fighter, she can't just pull off some special skill out of her butt and win the day. She has to be clever. The only issue I have with this series is that this is yet another story that takes place during the first trilogy. Even though all of the comics prior to 2015 aren't canon anymore, it seems a good deal of the new series take place during the original trilogy. And that just seems so unimaginative. If you want to get newer readers, then you're going to have to make more series that take place in the current trilogy and focus on the newer characters and make newer characters. Now, if Dr. Afro were adapted into a film, then her best chance at success would to be put into a different time period. If it was decided to keep it during the first trilogy, then Dr. Aphra's adventures would have to be animated since the original cast has either 
aged out of their roles or unfortunately passed away. I say set her story during the current trilogy. Yeah, I know current comics are canon, but hey, I'm sure Lucasfilm can make an exception here, right? It would be interesting to see her interactions with various people from the First Order and the new generation of heroes from the Resistance. This would give certain characters a good kick in the pants. Also, if you want to keep her current series canon for the film, just have her go on an adventure where she's forced into the future. Problem solved. There's one more thing I want to talk about. I've taken a look online and there's a lot of negative comments and videos, heck, even channels that talk about how Dr. Afra is an SJW. She's not. It just seems like people are tossing that term around willy-nilly, not actually knowing what that term actually means. If you want to know what my definition for the term means, then just check out the second half of my Owl of Dogs review. I don't see any type of political agenda in her creation or how the character acts. If I were to describe her character, I would say it's a mix of Indiana Jones and Han Solo with a dash of Selena Kyle Catwoman tossed in. So a fun, resourceful character that is the cause of all of her problems and successes. Plus, she has a difficult relationship with her surviving parent and makes bad choices when it comes to love. What's not to like? Dr. Aphra is a well-rounded, interesting character that would fit just perfectly into the current Star Wars movie universe. Plus, she's a woman and this would provide a great opportunity for a talented female Asian actress for a great role. Also, because of this, a film about her would do well in the box office wise in Asian countries, especially in China, which film studios want a piece of. Dr. Afra also solves the problem the current trilogy of films has with the new female characters. She actually lives up to her billing, unlike Captain Phasma, and she isn't a character where everything seems to come too easily for her. And it's explained in the series why she knows what she knows and she can do what she could do. Unlike with Rey. And finally, she's a likable but extremely flawed character. Isn't that what all the fans are asking for? If you found this video interesting, then please comment below, share it, subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to help out more, then you can support this channel by donating anything, any amount on my Patreon. So until my next review, so until my next video, have a good day and read more comic books.